So we are on Ta'anit, third chapter, eighth Mishnah. We're talking about fastings. And when do we need to fast? Okay. Al kol tzara shelo tavo al atzibur. Any trouble that comes upon a congregation. Um, by the way, it doesn't say al kol tzara shetavo al atzibur that will come on the congregation. It comes that will not come because in Hebrew you don't want to say. You find it in the Bible many, many occasions. You don't want to say the negative things, so you say it in a positive way. So sometimes you say even the opposite. So over here we, we have an example of that. In Hebrew, we say on every danger that shouldn't come on the tzibu. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's not that uh, that that do, that, that do not come. come. Yeah, that uh, yeah, but it means that will come. Literally, that's what it means. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but it, learn it like that shouldn't come. Yeah. Klomar shetavo al atzibur, which means that will come on the congregation. Venakta mishna shelo tavo lashon ekiya. And the mishna says that she shouldn't come, that it won't come, that doesn't come, because this is a nicer way to talk. So what do we do? Like we say before, matriin aleha. You blow the shofars on it. What does it mean? Blow the shofars. Mit anim vetokim beshofar means we fast and we blow the shofar. Except one. So we learned about all the other ones. War, um, batzoret, uh, famine, and all these things that you want fast. Except one of them. One of them we don't. Or one of them we don't matriim. We'll see. Chutz mirov gshamim. Except when it rains a lot. When you have too much rain, you don't, you don't do it. Kshiyordim gshamim. Yotem in atzorech. When there's too much rain, even though people suffer from too much rain, as you can see, you can have floods, you can have a lot of problems. Because we do not matriinalehem, uh, we don't blow on them. Why? Because in general, they're good. Rain is a good thing. You don't ask God to stop something which is good, even when the good is too much. And you don't daven on good things. For example, let's take an example from life. Somebody doesn't know how to handle money. Right? And God gives him money all the way from the, the done from, from heaven. And he does stupid thing with him. So he, for him, money is bad right now. It's too much money, let's, let's say. He chokes to it already. Too, too much. It's, you shouldn't daven, God, don't send me money. Yeah. <laughs> like Bnei Israel that came out of Egypt with all the gold, and they did the gold cup. Very good. So much gold. Exactly. Don't daven for, no, for, for, for something good. Don't daven for not getting something good. So let's take an example. Really? Is that true? So let's see. There was one of the sages, his name was Choni. Choni the circle. That was the way they called him. Choni the circle. So there was a, a case that they, tell, that they told Choni Ameagel. Choni the one who, who is the, the circle Choni. He was one of the sages. He was very close to God. So they told him, go pray that the rains will, cal- will come down. Amar lahem, so he told them, Tzuva achnisu tanurei psachim. So he told the people, okay, but before I do, go out into the fields. This was just before Pesach, and everybody was making, baking the matzah in a, in a new oven that they made out of mud. And if you know how the ovens are made in the old time, it's just uh, mud that they put together. So, pe- People put it together. So he says, take all the, this is the time, take all the, those ovens back home. Because when it rains, it will all, it will, it will all dissolve. Because all these ovens used to stand in the fields. And people would prepare them for the Korban Pesach, for this Pesach sacrifice. And since they were made out of uh, clay, he told them, put them into your house, so that they will not become um, melted in the, way, in the rain. 
שבטוח היה שירדו גשמים בסולוך תפילתו, because he knew, I asked God it happens, not like, you know, not like somebody else. Somebody else ask, maybe it happens, maybe it happens, he knew, me and God are, uh, are friends. I, I have a connect, a connect line to God. He התפלל, so he did daven, לא ירדו גשמים. So he did daven, and the rain did not come down. מה עשה? So what did Choni do? אג עוגה ועמד בתוכה. He made a circle, and he stood inside of it. ואמר לפניו, לפני הקדוש ברוך הוא, and then he said in front of God, ריבונו של עולם, he says, master of the universe. בנכו שמו פניהם עליי, it says your son, your nation are looking at me now. They want, they ask me to intervene on their behalf. And why me? It says every Jewish guy can, can come and daven. Why me? Because everybody knows. אני כבן בית לפניך. Me and you have a close connection. I'm with you every day. We, we talk every day. Other people talk with him once every six years. You know, even if they daven every day. Real talk we're talking about, right? נשבעני בשמך, it says, I come to you and see you every day, God, you, you, know, we, you know our relationship. I make an oath in your name, in your big name, שאינני זז מכאן, I'm not going to move out of the circle, עד שתרחם על בניך, until you're going to have mercy on your nation, on your sons. התחילו גשמים מנטפים. God says, no, I have no choice. So it started to, started to drizzle. לרדות טיפות טיפות. אמר חוני המעגל, חוני המעגל wasn't happy, he says, לא כך שאלתי, I didn't ask for a drizzle, I asked for rain. לא כך שאלתי, אלא גשמי בורות שיחינו מערות. I ask for rains that are going to fill all the water holes, all the bushes, all the places, all the places that holds water. Something that fill out all the water reservoirs. גשמים מרובים שיהיה בהם כדי למלא את הבורות. Enough rain to go into all the water reservoirs. התחילו לירד בזעף. So they started to become stormy. You know, like, פששש. אמר חוני המעגל, so חוני המעגל comes to God and says, לא כך שאלתי. זה חוץ פניק. God reads it whenever he wants. He says, I didn't ask for that. אלא גשמי רצון. I wanted nice rain. You know what I mean. What do you play with me? ברכה ונדבה, rains that give blessing, gives charity, do it nice. ירדו כתקנן. So God says, okay, you get good rains. עד שיצאו בישראל מירושלים, להר הבית מבני הגשמים. Until the Jewish people went out from Yerushalayim, to הר הבית, because of the rain. There was so much rain, everything got flooded. הר הבית is tall, so everybody had to walk out. עוד תהיו ירושלים. שהמקומות הנמוכים, הנמוכים נשטפים מרוב הגשמים. There was so much good rain, but such a long time, like in England, Israel is not England, that everything became flooded until הר הבית. ועלו להר הבית שהוא גבוה. And they came up to הר הבית, that it is very high. Came up to the temple. באו ואמרו לו, so the Jewish people came and said to Choni, כשם שהתפללת להם שירדו, it says the same way you pray to them that they will come down, כך התפלל שילכו להם. It says we're not England over here, we cannot have rain for a month, you know, it's a nice rain, but it's a month already of rain, we can't handle this, this is too much. So it says, go daven that God will stop the rain. שיפסיקו בשביל. אמר להם, צאו וראו אם נמחת אבן התואים. It says, go out and see if the stone of the wanderers, we're going to explain what the stone of the wanderers is soon, if the stone of the wanderer is still up. I mean, it can still be seen. So what is the stone of the wanderers? אבן גבוהה מאוד הייתה בירושלים. There was a very high stone in Yerushalayim. שכל מי שהיה מוצא מציאה היה עומד עליה ומכריז. That anybody who found something in the public domain would stand up on the stone and says, I will find a purse. If you tell me signs of which purse you lost and they match these signs, I'm going to give it to you. So in the three regalim, during the three holidays, people would go up to that stone from all over Israel. Yeah, and they would say, 
it was they didn't they didn't have the merchandise there. The guy would hide the merchandise so you can't see it and yeah, you can cheat. Well, yeah. yeah, but you would announce yeah, yeah, yeah. you would you would announce what what you found. I found the dog. I found the horse. I found the cow. I found the, uh, the whatever money. Yeah. שכל מי שהיה מוצא מציאה היה עומד עליו מכריז מציאה מצאתי used to announce I found something ובאים בעליה the owners would come נותנים סימנים they would have to give signs that it's theirs ונוטלים אותה and they would take it ואותה אבן הייתה נקראת אבן התוהים and that stone was a famous stone it was called the stones of the wanderers שהתוהים ומחפשים אבילתם היו באים לאבן זו that the people who were wandering around looking for their Um, merchandise that they lost, they would come to the stone. It's like Oxton found over here. Ve'yesh gulsim, the Adozu says, Even hatoen. It says why it's called Even hatoen. So we, before we learned Even hatoen from the Lashon wonder, people walking around looking for it. Over here it says, no, 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 it's not, that's not the root word. The root word is the toen, like in the litigant. Like a litigant in a court case, you have to prove that it's yours. It's the event that you have to come over there and prove that it's yours. Different. Yeah, atoen. Shetoanim sham be'inyan ha'avedot. That you are trying to prove your point that this merchandise is yours. Ve'amar choni ha'magel derech guzma, and then choni ha'magel said, in a way of guzma. Guzma is a... He was, uh, the word in English? Exaggerating. Thank you. He was exaggerating. Shekol zman shelo nimcheta even atuim. So this is what Choni Yemagel tried to tell them. As long as this stone is still there, lo itpalelu sheyafsiku kshemir. I'm not going to, it, it sh- nobody should daven that the rain shouldn't come down. Because rain, as a general rule, is a good thing. So what are you trying to tell me? To try to tell God, st- stop giving money? It doesn't work this way. Yeah. So this is the, stem, the first explanation. There are those who explain according to the Talmud Yerushalmi, that Choni Amagel told them, just like it is impossible for a stone to become, um, just like a clay to become um, melted, let's say, soft, melted, the same way you cannot daven when God gives good. Also it is brought down in the Gomorrah. He told to them, it says, this is what I've been learning, that we don't pray to God on something good that's coming down, even though if it's too good. Nevertheless, nevertheless, says, I have connection. Give me a bull. A fa- a, so we're going to bring it as a sacrifice. Is a thankful, a thank you bull for God. Give me a bull. I'll, I'll do something. They brought to him a bull for sacrifice as a thank you offering. So he put his both hands on it and he said on him, Ribono shel olam, he says, Master of the Universe, Amcha Yisrael sheotzeta ממצרים, your nation, the Jewish people that you took out from Egypt, אינם יכולים לעמוד, they cannot stand, לא ברוב טובה ולא רוב ברוב פנות. If you give them too much, they melt. If you give them too, ma- too, ma- too, too little, they melt. They can't handle you know, the extremes. You know, you have to give them somewhere in the middle. יהי רצן מנפניך, may it be your will, שיפסקו הגשמים, no, no, it's not good, it's excellent, but they, it's too much for them, that the rain will stop, ויהיה רווח בעולם, and there's still going to be a lot of blessing in this world, not just that it will stop, so it will stop. מיד נשבע הרוח ונתפזר האבים וזרחה החמה. So immediately the wind stop, The, re- the rain clouds spread out and the sun was seen. Shalach lo Shimon ben Shatach. So Shimon ben Shantach said, What are you doing, Choni? Le Choni al Magel. He sent to Choni al Magel. 
אלמלא חוני אתה, גוזרני עליך נידוי. It says, if I don't know how you close with God, you're חוני, you're a great חוני that everybody talks about, I would put you in, ex- in excommunication. What you did deserves excommunication, he told him. שמנדים על כבוד הרב, it says because why? Because there is such a thing, you get excommunication when somebody disrespects his rabbi. When your rabbi gives you something, why is he disrespecting? he's disrespecting God. Oh. He says, your rabbi decides that you need rain, and you to tell him, don't give me rain. What do you mean? Your rabbi decided, your master decided, that you do need it. You can't tell the master you don't know what you're doing. והוא הטיח דברים ואמר לא כך שאלתי and you throughout the, throughout the thing you ask for rain the, the God gave you drizzle and when you tell God no 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 I don't like this drizzle who are you? that's what you deserve you deserve the drizzle that's what you get why can you complain? ויש מפרשים so this is the first thing by the way um, just an interesting thing why is this Shimon ben Shatach who did this? Because Shimon ben Shatach had a story with him that we see according to Shimon ben Shatach, you need to do exactly what the Torah says. What's the story with Shimon ben Shatach? At the time of Shimon ben Shatach, at this time, Choni Magel, Shimon ben Shatach, in the land of Israel, there was a problem with idol worship. One of the biggest problems was that people used to go to witches. There was a lot of women witches, Jewish women witches, that used to do a lot of voodoo. And it worked. And everybody used to go to them. Now, if you, according to the, to, to the law, when you, you deal with it, in order to kill in Jewish court, it's a long, long process. It takes sometimes, you need witnesses, there's no witnesses, you need warning, there's no warnings. It's complicated. You can, you, it's impossible. It, it doesn't happen. But he saw that the Jewish nation is going to such a direction that he says, we need to do something. Everybody is going to go to this, go, is going to these witches. And the, the, it's called a time of emergency. Like in America, you have times of emergency where the government can come in and take your home and do some things, right. whatever it is. So this is called a time of emergency. So what did he do? He took a hundred witches and he hung them all in one day. No trial, no nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, people went there, da da da. So yeah. now you can imagine the families of these witches didn't like it. They didn't like it. So they hired two guys to come to court and said that they saw Shimon ben Shatach's son do something that deserves the death penalty. Yeah, that deserves the death penalty. So the two, the two guys came and he says, yeah, he deserves the death penalty, 100%. We're going to give him the death penalty. So after that, it was about to become the cutting off of the head of the son. They tried to investigate and everything, but the two guys had the stories correct. At the day of his, um, what do you call it, of his uh, death penalty that was supposed to be carried out, one of the guys couldn't take it anymore. He came to court and he says, look, they paid us. We lie. I cannot have it on my conscience to kill this guy. So he was very happy. Now his son is going to go to f- set for free. So his son stood, stood up in court and he reminded the court that a witness that once he said testimony can never take it back. Because if he says he's a liar, if he was a liar then, then he's established as he's a liar. Therefore, you cannot trust his testimony now. <laughs> yeah? So, and what did they do to him? They actually killed the son of Shimon ben Shatach, even though everybody knew he's innocent. Because that's Jewish court. So this is, you know, you understand. Why is not a dim zoom in me? Why is it a dim zoom in me? A dim zoom is only when two other witnesses come and they don't say it didn't happen. They say, you two guys were with us in Be'er Sheva when you said you were in Ashkelon. It's a different dim completely. More, more people. You need two more guys and, ah. and they, not, it, uh, it has nothing to do with the case. It says, you said you saw him. You couldn't have seen him because you were with us at some other place at the same time that you said you saw him. That's the deal of Edim Zomimim. Okay? And that's it. So now you understand Shimon ben Shatach, why he's upset. Because his whole life is about you have to keep the Torah no matter what. And this guy knows the Torah and he doesn't keep the Torah no matter what. You know, you know the rules. 
So, so, so Chodni tells him, you, you know, you know me, I don't have the same rules as you. I have, a, I have a, you know, connections. I have connections with God, not like everybody else. Okay. Uh, so that's the first explanation. The Yesh Mefarshim, there are those who explain why he says you need excommunication. שאין ראוי לצדיק להחזיק על עצמו כל כך בתפילתו. It says it's not befitting to come and say, I know exactly what God's going to do. You tell everybody, like, yeah, take your ovens into the house, do whatever, because, like, you know, you know for sure, I, I can make God do it. The fact that you're saying, I can make God do it, that, for that you deserve excommunication. שהיה מדבר, דרך כזאת, says, you cannot decree on God what to do. You do not know if God will listen to you or don't listen to you. You're not God. אבל מה אעשה לך? But says, what, what, what can I do? שאתה מתחתן לפני המקום. It says, you can't, it's like, you know, God sees you, you're like a baby. You know, like a baby comes in front of me, and says, oh, yeah, you can't, come here, it doesn't matter. You messed up, you broke it, don't worry, don't worry. Everybody else, if they break something, they get punished. But you, eh, you're God's baby. God loves you. There's nothing I can do, God loves you. ועושה לך רצונך כבן, it says, whenever God sees you, whatever you ask from him, you know, God loves you to such an extent that it doesn't matter what happens. You do it, you ask nicely, you don't ask nicely, you're guaranteed to get it. On you there's a verse that says, that your father is going to be joyful and your mother and your mother and the one who gives bo- bo- ber- gave birth to you is going to be rejoicing. In other words, you have a special communication with God. Nobody else can act this way. So in other words, it tells us, this is on what Choni did. We do not do what Choni did. We go by... But there is such a concept. Choni is a special guy. Choni is a special guy. You don't mess with Choni. That's right. 